vibe, ay, 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 ride with the vibe, ay. Ride with the vibe, my delegation the real is the acts of the apostle. Ride with the vibe, delegation the real is the acts of the apostles. I know the problem. Mount Zion, God body building up like Lou Ferrigno. Uh, the gospel that we pump and we work out everywhere we go. Uh, Stop, I say to Levi, watch I go on the bench and keep pops of the Northern Kingdom. Tell Judah to get up with me. We on the road, cruising so smooth, I just let the top down. Do everything in order, we solid this from the top down. Uh, standing up. For the most high against the evildoers Wicked niggas out here scoffing But somebody had to do it They just talking while we proving The gospel that we stand on We set for the defense against who handling the word wrong No, this ain't no vacation But feel the sunshine vibes It's all work and no play We throwing, look how time flies So fly, most high fresh Purple with the gold Who does fit? Give me that Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it on! Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. I want y'all to look at these signs right here. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Bible says God will bring a certain people into Egypt with ships. My question is this. Do you know what Egypt means according to the Bible? Y'all 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 ever read a little bit of the Bible before? Y'all ever heard about Moses taking his people out of Egypt and they walked through the Red Sea when he split the Red Sea? Watch it. Y'all pay attention. Pay attention. Read. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. Bring it out. This too, bro. Read. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt. Watch what Egypt means. Read. Out of the house of bondage. What does Egypt mean? of the house of bondage. What does Egypt mean? What is bondage? You don't know? What's bondage, my brother? Bondage means slavery. Right. You heard that? Bondage means slavery. Watch this scripture. Read that in 28 and 68 again. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So, so he says he's bringing them into Egypt again. Where is he bringing them again? To slavery again, right? right. He said, I'm bringing you into slavery again. Read, watch. With ship. With what? With ship. With what? With ship. What people you know went into slavery on ships? How old are you? You 15. How old are you? You 14. Y'all don't know who went into slavery on ships? Y'all don't know who went into slavery on ships? You a follower or you a leader? Oh, black people. Huh? Oh, black people. Black people went into slavery on ships. Right. You an Israelite, brother. That's, That's right. That's your race. Teach us. You understand? This is what y'all supposed to be learning. Right. Y'all supposed to be living righteously according to God. That's right. Because if you don't keep the commandments, you're going to die. Did you know the Bible say you a God? That's Teach us. You ever heard that before? You ever heard that you a God? Teach us. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms chapter 82, Teach verse 6. Up. Bring it up. Psalms 80, look, you letting brother pull you from the word. Hey, bro, scripture say don't follow a multitude to the house. You got to go home. All right, your parents say you got to go home. All right, for sure, read that fly. Read that fly. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 82 and verse 6. Bring it out. I have said, ye are God. The Bible says that you are a God. You understand? Read. Of you are children of the Most High. So if you are God and you are a child of the Most High, shouldn't you be doing what your Father instructs you to do? So my question is this: Did the Father of of you of your people, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, did He command you to put dip in your lip? So why do you do that? You're not sure. You love God? Give me that 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Bring it out. Because you got that dip in your lip. You know what that costs? Cancel. Exactly. So you know you hurting yourself. So why do you do it? It's a habit, right? That's why we're here to teach. We got to break those bad habits. You got to break them bad habits. I gotta, I, how how I old are you? I have this and drink it. Okay, well, guess what? You got to break that. You're you 54, right? I don't look it, but I got Watch this. Watch this. Read that in 1 Corinthians 3.16. You're 54. Why? We're going to deal with you. Read that. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Bring it up! Ye know, know ye not that you are the temple of God? You, your body, is the temple of the Most High God. Right. Read. And 
that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If you keep the commandments, the Spirit of the Most High God that created the heavens and the earth will deal with you, will dwell in you. Right. That's a powerful thing to have the Spirit of God in you. You understand? But it ain't going to dwell in you if you're breaking those commandments. Okay, how long ago? How long ago was that, my brother? About five years ago? Well, listen, bro. You can't you can't let that drive you into depression to where you destroy your own soul. Right. You understand? Because, hey, that, that was a judgment from the beginning. We all got to return back to the dust. But you know how you show your parents honor? Because, you know, when you read in uh, Exodus chapter 20 where it says, honor your father and mother, that's talking about keeping the commandments of the Most High. To show the type of man that your parents produced. Right. To show that you are an honorable man. So you can't let their name die out as, as a, uh, people who could not raise a child properly. That's why you got to turn your life around. That's right. You got to start keeping the commandments. Teach, you can't let the things, your sorrow and your depression cause you to destroy yourself. Right. Huh? And so you, you, you depre you're in depression, right? Well, listen, bro. This is why we out here to teach this. We out here to give you some worth, some self-worth, so you can see yourself as a God. You know why? Because you don't really America, we taught that the black man ain't nothing. We have no hope. You understand? But that's why we showing you who you are. You understand what I'm saying? Get that uh, in Sirach chapter 38. The talk of where it talk about heaviness. All right? Now watch this. We're going to finish that at 1 Corinthians 3.16 because I do want to touch on your sins. But we're going to also show you that you great, bro. You got to keep these commandments. You understand? The Most High created you to serve Him. He didn't create you to drive yourself into depression. Right. You know why? Because you're an older man. You say you're 53 or 54? Guess what, bro? You got to be a leader in this community to these young men. They got to look up to you. Because guess what? Everybody go through something. Everybody got something that could drive them into depression. But guess what? Man, we got to stand up like men. You got to gird up your loins and lead your people. Because look at our, look at our whole nation. Yeah, you might have you suffered the loss of your parents, but guess what? We suffering the losses of sons, young, young sons every day. I'm sure your parents died at an old age, right? They lived a life. But we got men in this neighborhood that's dying for drugs. You understand? We got men in this neighborhood that's going to jail for life because they want to sell drugs to their own brother. They want to kill their own brother. So guess what? You got to look forward and be that leader that the Most High created you to be. What you got? Sirach 38 and 18. Sirach 38 and 18. Let's get that. Well, pay attention. Just listen to me, and we're going to touch on them things so you can overcome them, right? That's right. Read. This is the book of Sirach, known as Ecclesiastes, chapter 38 and verse 18. Uh -huh. for, Read for, verse uh, 16. Verse 16, my son, let tears fall down over the dead. Read that again. My son, let tears fall down over the dead. So your parents died. So the scriptures say, let tears fall over the dead. More than the death of your parents, right? All right, watch this, read. And begin to lament, as if thou had, had suffered, suffered great harm thy, thyself. Read. And then cover his body according to the, to the custom. Read. And neglect not his burial. So your parents die, you mourn their death, you bury them, right? Read on. Weep bitterly and make great mourn and use lamentation as he is worthy. And that and that a day or two, lest thou be evil spoken of. So you gotta mourn for your parents said about a day or two. At the most seven days, read. And comfort thyself for thy heaviness. What does it say? And comfort thyself for thy heaviness. But now you gotta come Comfort yourself, bro. Now, after you experience that, you got to begin to comfort yourself. You understand? You find comfort in these scriptures. Right. You don't find comfort in tobacco. Right. You don't find comfort in drug abuse. That's right. You don't find comfort in alcohol. Teach y'all. Hold that. Give me that in Romans chapter 15, verse 24. Bring it out. Romans chapter 15, verse 24, 15 and 4. Why? Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Watch this. That's how we got to comfort ourselves. Because black people find comfort in abusing themselves. You understand? Killing themselves. Whether it be with sex and fornication, whether it be through drug use, usage, 
You understand? Or whether they be through taking out their frustrations on their other brother. Yeah. But this is how you find comfort. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Watch this, bro. This is the book of Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Uh -huh. For whatsoever things were written afore time. The Bible say whatever was written before time, read. Were written for our learning. Uh -huh. That we through patience and comfort and the scriptures okay. might have. Read it again. That we, through that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So you gotta find comfort in these scriptures. Right. This was gonna give you hope. Yes. And we about to show you some hope. You understand? You gotta let go of the stuff in the past. You gotta you gotta stand up like a man, bro. That's right. You understand? So watch, listen to this. So we through read that again, we through patience to read. We through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. The scriptures say when you read this Bible and you trust in the word, you're gonna have hope. Right. And patience and comfort through these scriptures. So go back to Sirach chapter 38. Sirach chapter 38, where we left off. Verse 18. Verse say 18. Read. The book no, reverse uh 18. For all, oh, the book of Sirach, chapter 38, verse 18. Read it out. For of heaviness cometh death. So the scriptures say, for of heaviness cometh death. That's heaviness is talking about depression. That drives you to death. You understand? You ever notice when one when one spouse dies, if they're at an old age, then the other spouse, it don't take too long for them to die right after. Because they drive themselves into heaviness. Right. They'll weigh down on your body. You understand? So it said, for of heaviness cometh death. Read. And the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. So it breaks your strength to where you now you depend you depend on substance abuse, whether it be tobacco, whether it be weed, whether it be other other kind of forms of um, drugs right. and alcohol. Yeah, you understand? But guess what? It said that what does it do to the strength? Break it strength. It breaks your strength because guess what? The scriptures say you're supposed to find comfort through the Bible. That's supposed to be your strength. Right. You understand? Give me that in uh, Nehemiah chapter 8. Hold it. Yeah, Nehemiah chapter 8. Uh, let me see which one it is. Huh? Uh, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Read that. Let's get it. Nehemiah chapter 8. You got to listen to this. 8 and verse 16. Nehemiah 8 and 16. Read that. Book of Nehemiah chapter 8 and 10. Then he said unto him, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and the sin and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto your Lord, uh -huh. unto, unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. So you got to find joy in this Bible. You got to find joy in knowing that you are Israelite. God said, the Most High God said, you are his son. Right. You are a God. That's right. You understand right. you got to follow the commandments that he taught. That should, that should give you joy. That should give you comfort. That's you right. You understand? Because guess what? This world was created for you. That's right. You're meant to be a ruler on this earth. Teach but guess God. what? We're at the bottom. We suffer in pain through death of our family members. We suffer in pain through the poverty that we're going on, that's right. going on in our neighborhoods. But guess what? That's why you got to lean on the word of the Most High, because that's going to give you strength. That's right. But if you continue thinking you're a black man, guess what? Ain't no salvation for just a black man. Right. You got to understand that you're an Israelite. Teach, you And there's something greater than uh, what we learn in the Christian church. It's something greater than that. You understand? Now go back to Sirach, chapter 38. Sirach, chapter 38. Watch this. So go back to verse 18. The book of Sirach, chapter 38, and verse 18. Uh -huh. For of heaven is cometh death, and the heaven is of the heart breaking strength. The scriptures say the heaven is of the heart breaking strength. Because guess what? You're afflicting yourself in your own mind. You're thinking of things, reminiscing on stuff, and it's driving you into depression. But you got to be meditating on the word of God. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. You find that strength in his Bible. Read. In affliction also sorrow remaineth, and the life of the poor is the curse of the heart. Take no heaviness to heart. So the scriptures say, take no heaviness to heart. We all going to go through something that's going to have us sad and down. But they say, don't take it to heart. Right. Don't carry that thing for years. Huh? I know, but guess what? Now you got to take the instruction of the Bible. That's right. This is the word of God that's going to heal you. You want to say, say, take no heaviness to heart. Read. Take no heaviness to heart. Drive it away. The scriptures say you got to drive it away. Because guess what? That your mind, your conscience is going to want to keep on thinking about it. But you got to drive it away. That's the instruction. Oh, I understand that. The Bible ain't never said it was going to be easy. But guess what? We're going to give you some scriptures to meditate on so you can fight against that. That's right. Because that depression is used to destroy you. And it's destroying you, bro. I can look at you. You're destroying yourself. 
That's why, exactly, that's why you got to take heed to the word of the Most High. Right. Read. And remember the last end. Uh -huh. Forget it not, for there is no no turneth again. Thou shalt not do him good. Read it but, 19 again. Verse 19. Take no turn heaven, so read it back. Take no heaviness to heart. Uh -huh. Drive it away. And remember the last end. Remember that you got to die too. Everybody got to die. But guess what? When you die, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be judged for the things that you do in this life. Right. So you have time to get yourself right. Teach up. Because after this pass, after we die, this is nothing. The kingdom of the Most High is coming. That's it's right. It's going to be an everlasting kingdom. And if you keep the commandments, you're going to rule in that kingdom. That's right. But if you sit here and you continue to deal with the smoking or the tobacco, the dip, and the alcohol, and stay in depression, guess what? You ain't going to see that. Right. And your end going to be worse. So you got to think about that. That's Read. Right. Take no, take no heaviness to heart. Drive it away. And remember the last end. Read. Forget it not. Nor there is no turning away, uh, turning again. Thou said not do him good. Scriptures say you ain't doing your parents no good when, you, when you're in depression. Right. You're not doing them no good. Watch, read on. But hurt thyself. But you hurting yourself. You hurting your, and you know that, right? You hurting yourself when you do that. Because it say drive it far from you. You're not doing them no good. You hurting yourself. Read. Remember my judgment. For thine also so shall be so. Like I said, you got to pass one day too. So the Bible says you got to remember God's judgment. Read. Yesterday for me. Yesterday for your parents. Read. And today for thee. And then your day is coming as well. Read on. When the dead is at rest, uh -huh. let his remembrance rest. Be at rest. Be at rest. And when the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest. Okay, I'll pray. So it said when the dead is at rest, you got to let their remembrance rest. Right. You can't let that keep coming in your mind and keep you in the same place as you was five years ago. Right. You got a question? You going to let me finish this? Can, can it wait? All right, watch. Read it. And be comforted for him. Be what? And be comforted for him. The scriptures say you got to be comforted. You got to be comforted for the death of them. Right? Okay. But guess what? You gotta try harder. Right. This is the first time you ever heard this. You know, this is the word, and I'm gonna show you something. We're gonna get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 12. But hold up, finish that. Uh, when the dead is at rest, let his remembrance rest uh -huh. and be comforted for him. Read. When his spirit is departed from him. So you gotta be comforted, right? Get that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 12. This is the first time you're getting the instruction from God of how to heal that depression. Right. How to heal how to heal yourself from the things that you've been afflicting yourself with. That's right. You understand? Because guess what? That's an internal battle within you, and the world's still moving forward. Teach The world's still going forward, but you still in the same place that you was five years ago. You understand? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 12. Watch this. Yeah, that's right. Now we got to bring you back to reality. Right now, you understand? You got to make yourself better. And you're going to learn that today. That's right. But the words we give you, then it's going to be your responsibility to stand up. Teach up. Take heed to it, right? Read on. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16 and verse 12. For it was neither earth nor mollifying plaster that restored them to help. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. The scriptures say the word of God heals all things. That's why the things you being you being taught today, you gotta remember that. Right. You gotta take heed to it. The word of God, when the word of God just said, remember his last sin. Drive that sorrow away from you. That's how you heal from that. But if you continue to stay in the same place, continue to drink, because guess what? That drink, that alcohol, it keeps you in that mode of being emotional. You right. Understand? It keeps them thoughts in your mind. That's right. You understand? You got to put that alcohol to the side. You got to just stop it. You understand? Take a break from the alcohol. Stop the um, stop the, the dip in your lip. You understand? Because that's going to keep that spirit coming back. Right. You got to feed yourself with the word of God. That's Give right. me that in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Bring it out. Get Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. So it said the word of God heals all things. You understand? Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, uh -huh. but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of of God. So guess what? You got to leave that alcohol alone. Right. It said man should not live by bread alone. Now of course we know that's talking about food, but now you got to live by the word of God. You got to meditate in these commandments. Get you a Bible, read it, understand it, and get taught by the men of God. Right. What you about to say, my brother? Right. 
it caused you to lose weight and everything, right? Well, guess what? You can change that. You can change that today. Why? Since we're gonna help you change that today. Go back to Reve I mean, go back to First Corinthians 3 and 16. So guess what? You ready to change your life today? You, you seem hesitant. You ready to change your life today? All right. Why is that? Read it. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. Bring it out. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. So now you learning that you are the temple of the Most High. You special to the Most High God. Right. You understand? He wants to dwell in your body. So this is your calling today. Most High is letting you know you're the temple of God. Your body is not to be used to, to, um, to destroy it right. by smoking, to destroy it by getting drunk. You got to clean yourself up. Read. And that the Spirit of God dwell it in you. Uh -huh. If any man defile the temple of God, you defile that temple by continuing to dip, by continuing to smoke, by continuing to get drunk, what's going to happen? Read. Him shall God destroy. God will destroy you. That's the judgment from the Most High. So guess what? This is the instruction right now from God. Take that dip out your mouth. Spit that stuff out. All praise to the Most That's High. That's right. That's repentance. That's the first step of your healing process. Taking that out, putting that away. What a can it. Don't hold on to it. Throw that crap away. That, there you go. That's now it's empty now. That's good. It, well, that, it ain't good. But the point is, don't go buy no more. That's the first step of your healing process. Right. Put that dip away. Stop defiling your temple. Spit the rest of that out. You know what I'm saying? You got to depend on the word of the Most High. That's right. Then read it again. Him shall what? If any man defile? Him shall God destroy. If any man defile? If any man defile the temple of God, uh -huh. him shall God destroy. Now, you just took a step in repentance so God don't destroy you. Right. You understand? Now the Most High can start dealing with you. Now, he can strengthen you so you can drive those thoughts away of depression. Right. You understand? Give me that in um Ephesians. Well, give me that in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 11. Isaiah 5 and 11. So that's the first step. We're going to teach you some other things. All right? Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11. And then we're going to get Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink. So the Bible say woe, which means destruction unto them. They rise up early in the morning that they may follow strong drink. I can almost guess that you get up early, you get you a beer, and you keep on getting them throughout the day, right? What the Bible just said. The Bible say woe to them that do that. Woe means destruction, right? Read on. That's that alcohol right there? What you about to do with that alcohol? All praise to the most high. That's your second step. Taking heed to the commandments of God. Read that again. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink. The Bible say, woe to that man that rise early in the morning and follow strong drink. I get up at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. First thing, take my, take my shower, brush my teeth. And then after that, pop a beer and get ready to bring my wife to work for the a beer and the to come. Right, but guess what? You got to be the leader in your household. So right. guess what? Leave that drink alone. That's right. Because right now, your spirit too weak to be dealing with that. Right. That's going to get you back in that mode of depression. You understand? You got to leave that alone. Until you get stronger years down the line. But even then, I might suggest just leave that alone. You don't right. need that. You understand? He used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.